Let's go. So I apologize in advance because I have a whole plate of food here <laughs> so that I can eat while I'm streaming. Um, you know, just uh, been one of those days, just haven't had a lot to eat. So here we are. I've got my uh, curry chicken salad. It's all right. And um, we're going to play Secret of Shadow. No, not Secret of Shadow Ranch. <laughs> we're going to play Secret of the Scarlet Hand, part two. Um, okay, just making sure I'm playing sound. All right, y'all. You ready for this? Mm. Last time I said that when I started this game, it was... Uh, like 15 minutes before I actually got the game up and started and running. So let's hope that this time goes better. All right. Hi, all the friends in the chat. I see Abby, Elizabeth, Josh, Streamlabs. <laughs> Amy is here. Hi, everyone. Ah, oh, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, you're eating a family recipe. Wow, that sounds awesome. Man, I'm jealous. I I just like I was I was hungry. Okay, so tonight was book club night. Whoa. Okay, cat, you can't be here while I'm eating. Nope. Nope. You were too destructive. Okay. Um today was book club day and we did it a little earlier than usual just because like I needed to stream. So I made just, it was just an afternoon thing, so I just made a um, charcuterie board, which I usually do, but um, if it ends up being around, like, dinner time, then we'll have, like, dinner instead, or in addition to, so didn't have that today, so, like, I didn't have a whole lot for lunch, or breakfast, <laughs> um, and then, I mean, I had breakfast and lunch, but then for dinner, my dinner was, uh, cucumber sandwiches and cheese and crackers and pepperoni <laughs> and like that's it and some cookies so like not a lot so I was like yeah I'm probably going to need an actual meal so oh you're wearing your clue crew hoodie Amy thank you so much for your support it's so awesome of you all right guys let's play the game I I think I left off Um, where did I leave off? Oh, I left off. Henrik had just fallen down the stairs. Yeah, I definitely would want more than that. Yeah, I definitely do. Yeah. Okay, so let's go, let's go talk to some people. Mmm. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. You're so sweet. All right, so let's talk to, let's see if Joanna's in. Come in. All right. You can't see anything. Oh, shoot. What's going on? Oh, you know what? I think this is an easy fix. <laughs> Ta-da. There you go. Can we see it now? Just let me know. I'm literally waiting for the lag to catch up. You guys are gonna get here, and I'm gonna be like, um. Oh! <laughs> Mine was paused. Or something was way behind. Okay. All right. Let's go. All right. Here we go. First, the Pakal carving is stolen, and now my star glyph man bumps his head and forgets his own name. What's next, Nancy? Del Rio pulls the plug on the monolith. The board clams up on my funding. My mother posts my old prom pictures on the <laughs> internet. That was not it. Okay. Take it easy, Joanna. I'm sure everything is going to be okay. 
What I need from you right now is action, not commentary, Nancy. Will you follow up with the hospital and see if there's anything we can do to get Henrik's marbles back? I'll call right away. You can also pick up Henrik's mail if he gets any. Keep the lab in order and just try to help me keep the entire museum from going up in smoke. That is a lot to expect I've from an unpaid intern. Not Carpe lie. diem. Can you imagine? Like, Nancy has had no training. Okay. So, we need to go call the hospital. And maybe check for Henrik's mail, since she mentioned that. Nope, wrong way. Check for mail first. Why not? Hmm, I see no mail. Okay. Okay, that was the note from Henrik that we read last time. Let's check our voicemail. You have voicemail. Nancy, hi. It's Franklin Rose. I'm calling because it's just... This theft is very bad news for the museum. You can't imagine the limb we went out on to acquire that Pakal carving. It's been one of the museum's main attractions. Um, I don't want to take you away from your internship, but if you can do a little investigating, well, I think I speak for the whole board when I say we'd be very grateful. Give me a call when you have a chance. And Nancy, thanks. You bet, Franklin. This message is for Nancy Drew. Hi, Nancy. This is Nurse Bluefoot calling from Eleanor Roosevelt Memorial Hospital in regards to Henrik Vanderhue. I believe you're a colleague of his. Since Mr. Vander Hune was admitted, he has repeated your name several times in states so of semi-consciousness. As we've been unable to contact any of his family members, we're hoping you might be willing to act as Henrik's support person as he begins the difficult process of restoring his memory. Please call me as soon as possible to discuss this. My direct line is 202-555-4000. No, it's not. Thank you. A replay messages. No. You have. But seriously, though, can you imagine? Like, you're an unpaid intern. You just got there that day. And literally that day, you made such an impression on this man that you've met. Like, I think we talked to him twice. That he gets amnesia and starts repeating your name. Like, what the heck? I can't even imagine. I would be like, oh gosh, no. This is Nurse Bluefoot. Nurse Bluefoot, this is Nancy Drew. You left me a message regarding Henrik Vanderhuhn. How is he? Nancy Drew? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I'm so relieved. We've been unable to locate any family members. And we do like amnesia patients to have at least one personal support person when they begin reality orientation. Can you explain the amnesia? Henrik is suffering from an acute case of post-traumatic retrograde amnesia. At the moment, he is unable to recall even the most basic autobiographical It's so concerning, I know. From his name and address to his birthday and shoe size. He can't access the details of his personal history or events leading up to his accident. Is there any way to treat amnesia? Well, reality orientation is a kind of treatment that helps a patient get reacquainted like, with the I facts truly don't know and circumstances of his or her life. Henrik has not actually lost his memory. It's just that his brain is injured in such a way that he can't access the place where the memories are stored.
So how does he regain access to the storage place? First, we do repetitive memory exercises to help Henrik relearn the basic facts, Thanks, like Abby. his name and address, the name of his parakeet, if he has one, the date, and so on. Second, we try to stimulate Henrik's sensory memories in order to help trigger or find the way back to his cognitive memories. What are cognitive memories? A cognitive memory is something that you know or remember intellectually. For example, how do you know the name of this planet? Somewhere along the way, you learn that it's called Earth, and you just remember. But say you bump your head and forget the name of this planet. <laughs> you're you don't know where in the solar system the you're floating. I can't remember. Yeah, those are some of my favorite quotes from the game, too. You think Nancy was probably the last person he remembered or something, and the name kept popping into his head or something. That's probably pretty accurate. Um, that would be most unfortunate. I mean, unfortunate. she was the one who found him. Exactly. So that but could be the reason, because she was like the last person in his mind. blue and green globe. Suddenly you remember. That glorious sight is Earth. I live on the planet Earth. This is how a sensory memory can trigger a cognitive or intellectual one. That makes sense. What if the patient doesn't remember right away? You can't help Henrik remember his childhood, but you can probably help him remember his work. And who knows where that will take him? <laughs> All roads lead to Rome, as they say. Mm. One great tool is the Reality Orientation Board. This is a place to post information what and pictures for the patient to um, look at over a period of time. Sandwich. You may want to bring in uh, images applesauce. or photos to place Lentils. on the board. <laughs> and from the museum, here too. I just had like... So tomorrow is grocery day. I've got like no food in the house. But I was hungry. I, I was see. Like, I don't have time to well, cook. I'll be happy to help in so any way I, I can. So I need to make something fast. When are visiting hours? Visiting but hours are 10 to 4 every day. <laughs> so if a I just patient kind of is not engaged in treatment stuff together and, and if came here. he seems stable. Applesauce is a winner, yeah. Also, by the way, hi Morgan. Thank you for coming. Great. Uh, is there anything else? Just remember, Henrik's brain has been knocked around like a peanut in its shell. He may have attention difficulties, headaches, uh, anxiety. Sometimes he may seem giddy, too. We need to keep these conditions in check. Don't push him too hard, or he may have some kind of meltdown. Yeah, let's not Well, the last thing we want is a meltdown. I'll go easy on him. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, let's call Franklin Rose. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, hello. Do you have any news? Not really, but something tells me this case is going to get complicated. Oh, Nancy, you zero in on a case like a heat-seeking missile, don't you? <laughs> I feel so much better knowing you're going to follow up on every lead. I'll help in any way I can. Thanks, Mr. Rose. That's what I'm here for. All right. <clears throat> let's, uh... Let's go visit Henrik. That's probably the best thing to do. Oh, not that far. Zoom. This is not as fast as I would like it to be. <laughs> you look familiar. Is it time for my snack? Mm -hmm. Henry.
Eric, it's me, Nancy. You're looking very well. I'm here to help with your memory exercises so you can come back to Beach Hill as soon as possible. Beach Hill? Beach Hill is a museum here in Washington, D.C. Before your accident, you were working there on some important Maya glyph translations. Do you remember anything about that project? I don't even remember my own birthday. So if you're here to squeeze me for details, you're wasting your time. According to Nurse Bluefoot, you haven't lost any data. Your brain just doesn't know how to locate certain things at the moment. We need to give it some clues. How, pray tell, do you intend to do that? I'll visit, we'll talk, sometimes I'll bring you pictures. Pictures? Well, isn't <laughs> this nice? Think of it this way. You just got back from a fabulous trip, only you can't remember the places you went. So you decide to look through postcards to see which ones you recognize. Fine, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. These are Maya glyphs, like the ones you used to translate. Now, don't be upset if you don't know how to read them anymore. I can tell you what they mean. I know what they mean, dear. I wrote them. Yeah. I'm sure you have written them at one time or another in your career. So what do you think this is all about? The magician suffers yellow death. Your translator is sloppy. I should know. I am the author of the original work. The author? What are you talking about? That first glyph is the fool, not the magician. Furthermore, any decent epigrapher knows those glyphs refer to the infamous plague of oozing hives. A fitting curse for a fool, don't you think? Mm. I rather like it. If you wrote this note, then you must have stolen the carving of King Pakal. Did you? I don't remember. Mm. You're going to need to start remembering, pal. I'm investigating the theft of the Pakal carving. Please, Henrik, try to remember something. Who in the world is Pakal? Oh, my head. Oh, the pressure. I can't take any more today, Nancy. Okay, it's time for some memory therapy. Nancy, yeah, I don't think he's ready could for you that. come back tomorrow? All right. <clears throat> well, that's some big news. Okay, so what do we need to do? Need something? I need to show Henrik a photo of the Pakal carving. Do you have one? Check with Sinclair. Oh, yeah, you bet. I've got work to do. Semper ubi sabubi. Dang, girl, you got a lot of points. I mean, almost 8,000 points. That's crazy. <laughs> I also super appreciate that you've been here so long that you have almost 8,000 points. It's been a long time since you've played this. Me too. I'm kind of forgetting what I need to do. How are you? It's a fiasco just as I feared. Oh, I'm sick, sick, sick about the whole thing. Yes, your fears seem to have been quite visionary. I was in the museum when it happened. Really? Do you think it's the same person who carried out those other thefts? That awful red hand was left on Prudence Rutherford's jewelry box in Topeka. 
and on the display case in the museum in New Mexico. What's the chance they're not connected? Could be a faker. <clears throat> Why do you think the thief is leaving this red handprint? To be a gruesome scoundrel? <laughs> do you know Prudence Rutherford personally? Oh, we saw each other at functions now and then. Poor Prudence. She adored that necklace. What's the name of the museum in New Mexico? The Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. I feel like we they had a beautiful collection up there, worth a bundle, too. I appraised some pieces for them a few years back. I need a photo of the Pakal carving. Do you have one? Joanna took the official print for her insurance claim, but I have a couple extras. Here you go. Keep up the good work. You're right, Abby. We investigate Maya's disappearance in game five. And then we investigate a Mayan disappearance in game six. Coincidence? I think not. Where are we going? And we have to go back to him tomorrow. So let's go back to Beach Hill. I don't know if it was confirmed in the episode. I have no idea. Hi, Tori. How's your evening? Forgetting what to do. Maybe if I call Franklin. Time for your snack. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. You have no voicemail. Press nine for an app. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, to what do I owe the pleasure of this call? I need to contact a woman named Prudence Rutherford. I noticed she's on the board of the Topeka Commission for the Arts and that they've donated money to Beach Hill. Any idea how I might track her down? Well, you're in luck. It so happens that Prudence and I sat on the panel of judges for the Kansas Speak No Evil <laughs> Mime competition for three years in a row, back when I lived in Wichita. How's that for a small world? The Speak No Evil Mime competition. You judged a mime competition? Indeed I did. Amazing. I haven't talked to Prudence in about How ten years. How many invisible years. boxes did you but see? Let's see if I still have her in this old dinosaur of a Rolodex. Ah, yes, here we go. Got a pen? It's area code no. seven eight five 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 seven two seven nine. What's this all about? Tori, your snack sounds amazing. For those watching the replay, she's having a pickle, cheese. Rye chips and applesauce. I just had applesauce as well. Applesauce is always a good choice. Oh, probably some ice cream too. So good. This conversation cracked me up. <laughs> yeah. So Tori, what kind of pickles do you like? What kind of what kind of pickles does everybody like? Those who don't like pickles may just stay silent. I think Ms. Rutherford had a run in with a red handed thief, would have much like. like the one who took well, the call card. It sounded carving. like anything. But it would have looked like a lot of waving You're of arms, a real that's for sure. Pro, Nancy. 
Say, why don't I call ahead and let Prudence know what's going on? That way I can say hello Dill, mm -hmm. and she'll be expecting you. Dill pickles again. Mm-hmm. That would be great, Mr. Rose. Dill and bread and butter. Not a problem, dear. But prefer dill. I'm a big dill fan as well. Got a lot of dill love here. It's not a dilemma. Haha. <laughs> oh. I'm going to lose viewers for that. <laughs> Dilemma, I know. <laughs> Tori's book that gains viewers. Thank you, Tori. Well, look who it is. Ready to do some memory work, Henrik? I brought you a picture. My name is Henrik Vanderhume. My age is 61 and a half. Dang. My home is Washington, D.C. My occupation is epigrapher. Marital status is divorced. I have zero children. My allergies include chicken and bee stings. He's allergic to chicken? That's so sad. Okay. This will help you to remember. That face. He's as familiar as my own feet. Do you know his name? Pakal. Nancy, this is the stolen carving, isn't it? And I'm the one who took it. Pickle must are a big deal. We but why? <laughs> oh, Pakal. What Goodbye. could I have meant by this? Think, Henrik, where's the carving now? I can't remember. <laughs> All I need is some idea of where to look next. I'll take any scrap of memory you've got, You Henrik. think it's crazy to think he's 61 and a half? still in the yeah, museum. <laughs> no drumsticks for Henrik. Definitely a just for men color user. <laughs> Why would you break into the display case and steal the carving only to leave it in the museum? To protect him. I had to protect him. Oh, Pakal. Something is going on at that museum. A devious plot. I was the only one who could stand in the way. What kind of plot? Forgive me, Nancy. But when I woke up in this hospital bed, I didn't even know my own name. Perhaps the only thing I can offer you is this key. It was found in one of my pockets when I was brought in. Maybe that key goes to the lock where you hid the Bacall. I haven't a clue. Take the key now, Nancy. Find out what it opens and return to me, please, with some answers. We'll get to the bottom of this, I promise. In the meantime, I'll sit with my friend, Pakal, and see if he will tell me anything new. You must keep this to yourself for now. It's your only hope of getting to the bottom of this. This is a long shot, but do you know what animal Pakal was afraid of? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about the theft of Prudence Rutherford's necklace? I can't remember. Did you use Joanna's name last week to place an order for Cinnabar with Keep It Real Restoration? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. <laughs> Do you have anything against Joanna? Who knows? Henrik, I need to know where you put the Pakal carving. I can't remember. <laughs> you rest up. I'll be back. I'll be back I'll to harass you best. later.
All right. <clears throat> This is so exciting. How <laughs> is Henrik's hair so perfect? That is a really good question. Ah, there's my desk. You have now voice. Hmm. Wait. You have now voice. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, Whoa, please. Nancy, Jory. to what do I owe the pleasure of this call? That's probably the most points I've seen so far. Ah. Oops, false alarm. <laughs> I'll call you later. Not a problem, dear. Okie dokie. Well, uh, I have a key. Is it his desk key? I forget. Sure is. All right. No. Oh, oh. It's locked. Ah. What's in here? What secrets do you hold? Just this? Okay. I want to read your paper. Hmm. Yes. All right. Blessing, curse, curse, perhaps summon spirit, death. Death, Zock, Conjure, Summon, Hawk, Captive, Nah. No, oh, Bach equals Captive, Nah equals House. Captive House, Prison. Is a prisoner? Similar to the Blessing Glyph with Death's face. It looks like a grandma. <clears throat> Hooby. To bring down war metaphor, break, destroy. There's already a verb for destruction. My guess equals break, broken. Glyph resembles Kaban. Day, signs, Kaban, cab, earth. Either the earth world note called spirals, just like the earth band. Broken earth, four corners, page two. Of course, four corners of the world. A hall lord. MX1 Pakal Shield. Fascinating. The king's title, very familiar. Pakal, of course, but not like any other, like any I've ever seen. Wait, where have I seen this? Hmm. Rabbit, just like the scribe image. Rabbit as trickster, jester, fool. V uncommon. Hmm. The Copen, Copen Cliff. You Uba He does performs. Um, period ending the end. Hmm. Copen emblem has been modified with rabbit head, similar to the rabbit scribe Uba. Perform work labor. It was completed. Period ending till the end of times. You've been saving up your points. Don't spend it all in one place. Well, there's only one place you can spend it. So, you you do you. Number stations. Okay. 2050H2? Is that what that says? Transmits a series of five digits in Spanish with these transmissions starting with Atencion's Atencion. Una, one, dos, two, tres, three, cuatro, four, cinco, five, seis, six, siete, seven, ocho, eight, nueve, nine. Decoding the numbers. Write down the last three digits of the series and add a zero to it to get a four-digit number. Add each of the original five digits and add the sum to the four-digit number from the first step. This is the station that the smugglers will take messages on. Woof, that is complicated. The original period. Yeah. Example, if the station number gives 56123, then the smuggler station is 1247. Put a zero at the end of the last three digits, 1230. Add all of the digits in the series. 5 plus 6 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 17. Add the number from step 1 to the number from step 2, so 2030 
plus 17 equals 24 to 1,247. Sorry, I cannot speak. Okay, some numbers. Smuggler stations. Password is the Nahuatl word for snake. Enter it in Morse code and they'll confirm by voice. Then send a code word. Code word. Leche. Send the item immediately. The coast is clear. So milk. Mujer. Meet at the rendezvous. Woman. Sueno. Don't send the item. The coast is not clear. I don't know what that word means. Vacas. Payment has been sent. Is that it? Hmm. Looks like I need to find someone who speaks Nahuatl. Hmm. I wonder who that could be. <clears throat> Seven sixteen seventy two. Hiked with Big Bunny all day. Temperatures in the hundreds. Water scarce, but Highland region is beautiful and pristine, except for Bunny's incessant commentary. Even spotted a Quetzal flying amongst the branches. A rare treat symbolizes freedom and wealth. Trail highly prized by the Maya. Wow, you guys have a lot of points. 722, crossed paths with an old shaman today. Eager for some relief from Big Bunny, accepted Old Man's invitation to eat. Old Man Vicente gave us very strong tea, which BB reacted to which BB reacted negatively. He kept shouting, bunny rabbits, flaming bunny rabbits. Return of the repressed. Once he even pounced on the floor to try to catch one, but there was nothing there. Vicente thought this very funny. I nearly expired from, oh, there are other things on these pages. My bad. Hard rain last night. Scare shared tent with Big Bunny out of kindness. Pity. What does he eat? Nearly suffocated. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Nearly expired from embarrassment. Tea had no unusual effect on me. A very amused Vicente. Arr. Old man told us legend has it that the highlands are haunted by the spirit of Moxicali. I understood most translated for Bunny. Here is legend as best as I could gather. At the height of Bacal's reign, a royal Maya scribe, Chihuahili Amaxkali, wrote an account of the Maya that somehow defamed Pakal's name. Amaxkali disappeared along with all traces of her work. The rumor was that Pakal banished the scribe and her writings to the far reaches of the netherworld. Highland elders swear that Amoxicali has haunted these hills for centuries and will not rest until her writings are unearthed and her name is restored to dignity. Banished? Ha! If only for call were so lenient. Would have enjoyed this story much more without the unwanted outbursts of my foolish sidekick. Quite a tale, though. Amazing that it has survived somehow over hundreds of years. Bye, Amy. Thanks for joining. 723. Big Bunny wants to start small-time smuggling racket to pay off his college tuition. Ugh, he's the last person I'd want for a partner in crime. But I do need some way to fund my own studies. I wonder if I could stand it. 729. Travels today have been uneventful. Sun is hotter than ever. Tomorrow we return to base camp. Cannot wait to be rid of my companions. Suspect he is really a dog in bunny clothing. Yuck, 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 yuck. Or Bunny the Garrulous. Interesting. You really skimmed these the first time playing. I find them really interesting. I love the sounds on this. Nice to see you. You also like reading all the things, Tori? 
I like reading all the things. Unless I'm trying to go too fast, in which case I never pick up anything to read. Translation work. Okay, let's go wake him up. There are lots of clues to the culprit's identity that I truly missed in my first playthrough. Oh, really? I think Alejandro translates it, right? You go talk to Alejandro about your new huddle word. Mm, that's probably a good idea, yeah. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Why did Mexico choose to lend the monolith to Beach Hill and not some other museum? Johanna Riggs outbid everyone. I had no idea a small museum like Beach Hill could afford such an expensive arrangement. Do you know much about Maya glyphs? You've caught me there. I know Spanish, English, Portuguese, and several indigenous languages, including Akiche and Nahuatl but I have yet to learn the language of glyphs. Have you heard that the call carving was stolen from the museum? Well, I heard the alarms going off, but it wasn't until Henry called me that I heard the news. So you were in the museum at the time? I was dropping off the monolith agreement for Joanna, as I said I would. Did you see anything suspicious? I was running late. I just figured somebody tripped a wire and I kept going. I love that part. I'll need to alert the police so they can ask you some questions. <laughs> I have diplomatic immunity, so I do not have to answer any questions. But I will because I have nothing to hide. Is he wearing guy liner or is it just thick eyelashes? Don't you care about the disappearance of such a rare Maya artifact? That artifact was lost to me as soon as it left Mexican soil. So my friend Pakal goes underground for a while until he is sold again. Suddenly, he turns up in Amsterdam or Hong Kong. Unless he is rightfully repatriated to Mexico, what's the difference? I need to know the Nahuatl oh, word for snake. Down. Can you help me? What do you need that word for? Oh, I need it to send a message by ham radio. It's a long story. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. I hear you have been a great help to Henrik. I wonder if you can help me improve my memory, too. Does he want me to, like, slip him a 20? Something tells me this translation is going to come with strings attached. I am almost certain that the provenance documents for the Pakal carving were falsified. I have asked Joanna to see the documents, but she evades me. If you can find that file in her office and bring it to me, I think it might help my memory of Nahuatl a lot. First you tell me you were unconcerned about the theft of the Pakal carving, and now you have an urgent need to see the provenance documents? Is it just me, or is this a little suspicious? If I can determine that the provenance documents are a fraud, 
This will be the first major step toward legal repatriation of the artwork, whenever and wherever it resurfaces. Okay. Okay, Alejandro. I'll see what I can do. I feel my Nahuatl coming back to me already. Do you know what Sihuapili means? Princess or lady. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. You're terrible. Have you heard? Henrik van der Heun fell off the pyramid at the museum. He's in the hospital with a mysterious head injury. That is terrible news. I hope it's not too serious. Do you consider Henrik a conquistador, along with Joanna Riggs and Sinclair? Henrik is a student of my culture and my heritage. I'm not trying to buy and sell it. We don't agree on everything, especially not baseball, but I have nothing against him. Do you know what cinnabar is? The red powder that the Maya used? Sure, I know it. They use it at Beach Hill too, do they not? Cinnabar was used to make the red handprint that was left at the scene of a Pakal theft. What is your point? Joanna said the museum didn't have any, but the supplier said she ordered some last tell week. Nancy. Have you called the police? I don't know. Because he's trying to butter her up. I don't want to jump to conclusions. Of course. Sister Joanna couldn't possibly be a he's thief now, could she? Or something. Yeah, I think he's trying to butter her up to get the, uh, the provenance documents. I should get back to the museum. Goodbye. Go to the museum. Nope. <laughs> Ornamental carving. Carving unidentified glyph classic. Chuck Mool figure. Early postulacial. Figuring with bird head. Late classic. Oh, that's an as a C, not an O. So post classic. Classic. Mano and metate grinding tools. Classic post classic. Is there anything I need on this? Maybe later. Oh, I can't zoom in on the picture of the real people. Everybody had these steno books in the early games. It's the same word that's part of the Whisper's title. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, keys! People need to clean their dust drawers, my gosh. Gulf of Mexico. Oh look, there's glyphs on the back here. That's neat. Two thousand one. Oh, provenance. Here we go. King Pakal carving. Ancient King of Palenque, Jade, Classic Period, 650 CE. Identifying marks, Glyph, combination of Pakal, Shield Glyph, the Lord Glyph, and the Emix Glyph. Now one disc on the forehead. Translation, the first true king. Dimensions, four by four inches. Weight, 0.43 pounds. Site of excavation unknown, year of excavation unknown. Hmm. First known record, record of ownership, 1940, given by Rupert Starr to the Serpentine Gallery in Los Angeles, California, 1820 Wilshire Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 910. 
1955, sold by Serpentine to Felix and Miranda Peterson, Connecticut. 1993, sold at auction by Peterson Estate to Beach Hill Museum, Washington, D.C. Very interesting. Transfer of title for call carving. This is from the Serpentine Gallery. May 4th, 1940. Rupert Starr hereby transfers title of the Bacall carving to the Serpentine Gallery. The carving is given in exchange for 37% ownership of the gallery. Off specific. Rupert Starr, patron, John Greenberg, curator. Hmm. Serpentine Gallery. Sold to Felix Pearson. 10101 Lovely Lane. Greenwich, Connecticut. Pre-Columbian artifact, Maya origin, jade, four by four inches, image of Palenque ruler. Wow, that was expensive. Bertram Vandelay, attorney at law. December 2nd, 1992. Dear Taylor, as you may have heard, my longtime clients, Felix and Miranda Peterson, both passed away this summer in the heat wave. Felix was 89 and Miranda was 91, and by all accounts, they lived extraordinarily full lives. Still, it's too bad their air conditioning unit went on the blink when it did. Oh my god! I and all the citizens of Greenwich will miss them dearly. As you know, the Petersons have no children. Per their instructions, I am to arrange the auction of their estate and donate the proceeds to charity. As you may also know, the Petersons had a fabulous art collection, including several pre-Columbian artifacts that may be of particular interest to you. The auction will be held on February 7th. Please let me know if you'll be planning to attend. Sincerely, your friend and colleague, Bertram, Bertram Vandelay. Hmm. Executor of auction sale, Bertram Vandelay. Item sold, call carving. So this was in 1993. Description. Pre-Columbian artifact of Maya origin. Classic period, circa 650 CE. Jade. Image of Call shield glyph combined with Lord glyph and Imix glyph. 4x4 4 4 inches. 0.43 pounds. Terms of agreement. The executor of the state of Feliz and Miranda Peterson, Ber Bertram Vandelay, hereby transfers the title of the call carving to... Beach Hill Museum in exchange for the agreed upon sum of whoa, lots of money. Taylor Sinclair, bleh, Taylor Sinclair, Joanna Riggs, etc., etc. Okay, that is a very interesting document. Anything else in here? So that was 1993. This is 2001. Um, I'm no mathematician, but there's some years between now and then. Does that mean something? <laughs> Does that mean anything? Oh, I am not paying attention to you guys. The game is heavily... Oh, sorry. The game is heavily edutainment, but I do really like the museum. Yeah. It's always bugged me we can't do more snooping in Joanna's office. Same. I want to snoop everything. Yes, I feel like some of the rooms in the game, such as her office, are gold mines of snooping, and there's no way to do that. Though I understand it takes a lot of developing. Did the culprit mess with an AC unit to get rid of an old couple and acquire their Pakal? That's a really good question. Um, I don't think so. I, I don't, I don't get vibes that and there was any foul play in that particular instance. Um, just because like. Uh, this guy contacted Taylor and was like, "Hey man, long time no see. Come, come get, come, come get the stuff." But uh, you know, could be like I could be missing something. If anybody, if anybody thinks that that the culprit did uh do some nefarious things, then sound off in the chat. I gotta read more stuff on my reverse playthrough. Yeah. Nancy, the police called. They want me to go down to the station for further questioning. Something about an anonymous tip. Ugh. Do I have time for this? No. Hold down the fort while I'm gone, will you please? I left my office open if you need anything. Be back soon, Joanna. You have voicemail. Press zero. 
Nancy, it's Joanna. The police are done giving me the third degree, but now the board has suspended me. To, to make a long story short, I'm forbidden to set foot in the museum. Could you please call Franklin Rose and try to reason with him? If we don't get a move on, this exhibit is going straight down the tubes. To replay messages, press zero. Press nine for an outside. Okay, so let's let's recap here. Nancy's been on the job for three days now. And now she is the sole employee of this museum, and she's still not getting paid. <laughs> hey, random girl, run my museum. Boswell, Yay! Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew, calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, you must be psychic. I was just getting ready to call you myself. Whoop. As a matter of fact, I have been brushing up on my mind reading. Well, thank goodness I've got you on my side. I feel I should apologize for the situation that's going on at the museum, dear. I really did think we were setting you up with a nice little internship, a breather from your casework. <laughs> but instead, it looks like we've fed you to the lions. Yeah. Game 34, Nancy, better be paid, lol. Yeah, seriously, this poor girl. Well, in all my travels, I still haven't found a mystery free zone, Mr. Rose. Speaking of travel, I got a postcard from your father in Ouagadougou. Apparently, Burkina Faso has become the cultural darling of West Africa. He must be having quite an adventure. Hmm. Like father, like daughter. Anyway, Mr. Rose, I'm calling about Joanna. I think I know what you're going to say, Nancy. Um, let <laughs> me be sort... frank. No, seriously, Joanna though, Casey's Riggs right. Joanna has been in the um, doghouse with the board for months. Nancy actually getting paid to do something would be a first. Her thirst for acclaim has led her to gamble the future and the reputation of Beach Hill time and again. Now that we've lost the Pakal carving, one of our most notable pieces, well, she's just got to be stopped. I really don't think it's her, but okay. But with Henrik in the hospital and Joanna suspended, how can we possibly get this exhibit off the ground? Leave that to me. We'll postpone the opening if we have to. Look, I've got a client <laughs> yes, waiting, Yes, a Carson Nancy. game would be what so fun. Need now right, is so? for you to take up the slack. Let's have a Carson and I've spoken to the Wakadooku. rest of the board, and we've agreed that the best uh, thing Mystery, is to put you so in charge. Hi, Terry. Thanks for lurking along. Oh, Mr. Rose, I'm not qualified to be a curator. I don't have the experience. Maybe not, but you are the best qualified detective I know, which is just what we need right now. He seems to have a lot of adventure We're on his own. I'd love for him to be gone when we can. Yes! Maybe she goes to Prague with him. <laughs> just kidding, kiddo. If you can get and the call back, we'll see about giving fun. Ms. Riggs yeah. another chance. That seems fair, doesn't it? It's a deal, Mr. Rose. Bye, kiddo. I feel like a Carson game would be more along the lines of like a Sherlock Holmes type of deal. But that's just me. I don't know. We'll see. We'll never see. They'll probably never make it. Okay, anyway. Um, what do- oh. I know what to do. I know what to do. Let's go see... Our man who knows no hotel. Whose name currently escapes me. Alejandro Del Rio. Let's go visit Alejandro. Also, I know nothing about Burkina Faso, but that would be a cool location. That would be cool as a location. Yeah, I have literally never heard of it. <laughs> Hello, Nancy. You have a special delivery for me, I hope? Promise me that you'll take good care of these documents. Gotta lurk. Thanks for lurking along, Abby. What does that say? Wait, hold on. Okay, you know what? This is stupid. Hold on. I know how to do this. Okay, let's read this. As part of their working visit to the United States, the Mexican secretaries of the interior Santiago... 
Creel and the Foreign Affairs Jorge G. Castaneda met yesterday with representatives from various non-governmental organizations and NGOs who expressed their support for the statements made and measures taken by President Vicente Fox's administration in the area of human rights. The NGO representatives... all proved the government's decision to authorize the extradition of Ricardo Miguel Cavallo. Ricardo? Ricardo Miguel Cavallo. Is that a real person? Ricardo Miguel Cavallo. Argentine, he's an Argentine military personnel, a naval lieutenant commander, served as an officer of the national reorganization process, process ruled Argentina from 1976 to 1983. There's a movie about him called Cavallo Behind Bars. The prosecutor, the International Crimes Database has a file called The Prosecutor versus Ricardo Miguel Cavallo. Wow. In 2001, Ministry's decision to extradite Ricardo Miguel Cavallo, an Argentine citizen, to a Spanish court that seeks to prosecute him for his. Okay, wow. So that's. That's some real stuff going on there. Wow, that's crazy. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed that little, uh... I should little hand over the paperwork. Rabbit hole we went down there. Good work, my friend. I suppose you would like something in return? <laughs> I trust your Nahuatl has become fluent again. The Nahuatl word for snake is coatl. C O A T L. Coatl. Have you heard? The police received an anonymous tip and they're considering Joanna a prime suspect in the Bacall theft. They've taken her in for questioning. I called in that tip. She lied about the elbow. cinnabar, and you may not know this, but she has jeopardized the museum's finances with all of her wheeling and dealing. Why should she not be questioned? How do you know about museum finances? I have my sources. I should get back to the museum. Yes, you should. This man knows too much. Okay. <coughs> Let's go. Um... Beach up. Let's go beach it up. Okay, so I, I can't remember if I said this before, but I definitely was thinking this before, but I appreciate it so much that in this game, when you enter the museum, it just puts the keys in your hand and you just unlock it. And I don't have to think about unlocking the place every single time like I did in Maddie Jensen's apartment in Stay Tuned for Danger. Um, it's just, it just makes me so happy. Oh, we're playing FMK, huh? All right. You give me one point, one, one moment, hold on. One point. <laughs> Let's save my game first. Replace the game. Okay, let's pull up FMK. You guys can enjoy this with me. Phew, things are slow. So Alejandro is blackmailing other people too? It's quite possible, yeah. Okay, Casey, let's play FMK. Um, we're in the list with everybody, so let's go ahead and spin.
right, so our first person is Fiona Malloy. You're going to switch to lurk mode, but have to stay in chat for FFP first. Letitia Drake. And finally... Chief McGinnis. All right, y'all. Sound off in the chat. Who are you guys fighting, kissing, and marrying? All right. Um, what do, what do, what do? Let's go to my center of operations, my desk. This is starting to feel like a recent FMK. Yeah, I agree. Fiona Malloy was used quite recently. Okay, I've done everything on my little to-do list there. You have no voicemail. Fight Press Mrs. Drake, marry Chief McGinnis, line. kiss Fiona on the cheek. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, um, let's call the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Ooh, okay. You have me. Probably fight Fiona, kiss Chief McGinnis on the cheek, and marry Mrs. Drake so I can live in Blackmore. That's a great answer. Okay, what did I do wrong for that phone number? I didn't do anything wrong for the phone number. 1-505-555-1222. You have no... Press 9 for an outside line. one 505 Five 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 one two two two. Okay. Well, what do you guys think I should do next? Wait, I know the no huddle word for snake now, so I need to. I need to figure out what it is in. Morse code, right? Okay. But you know what? I have this all written down, and I don't want to be on forever tonight. So, let's go. The okay. radio tube went out. Oh, that's what I was waiting for earlier. Okay, let's go steal the tube from the other, the other thingy, 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 thingy thing. Whatever it is, wherever it is, it's in here somewhere. Ham radio. Ah. It's locked. Yes. Give me that. Oh, you don't need. Okay. Close it. Goodbye. Oh, can you electrocute Nancy? Can I? Is that a thing I can do? Don't go to. Why do I always always go to the garden? Ah. I forget how, but there is some way to do it. Really? Yeah, you can electrocute her by trying to change the bulb while the power switch is on. Oh! Can I still do it? No, I can't. Oh, well. Attention, Ocho. Trace. 
2, 7, 1, atención, 8, 3, 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 atención, 8, I don't know what I'm doing. 3, 2, 7, 1, atención, What do I do after I get the... 8, 3, what do I... 2, 7, 1, atención, 8, 3, 2, 7, 1, atención, 8, do I need to do the next word? 2, 7, 1, atención, 8, 3, 2, 7, 1, atención, 8, 3, 2, 7, I'm so dumb. Oh my gosh. Atención. Ocho. Transmítelo ahora. Ah. Okay, now they're listening. I forgot to put in the second frequency. I'm sorry, guys. Thanks for lurking along, Maggie and Tori. Mensaje entendido. Transmítelo ahora. Okay, um, leche. Mensaje recibido. Entregaremos el paquete lo más pronto posible. Cambio y fuera. Yes, thank you. They're going to send me the package immediately. All right. So I love Morse code. I actually, I wear a ring. I never take it off. That is, I don't know if you can see that. Um, it is a uh, ring that says it is, I love you in Morse code. And my my now husband gave it to me when we, we started dating, a couple months after we started dating. Um, and like he knew that I, I thought that Morse code was super, super cool and um, have always really enjoyed it because of the games. So he got me this ring that says I love you in Morse code. And later on in our relationship, he got me a bracelet that says I love you in Morse code as well. I don't wear that as much because I'm not a bracelet person, but um, I just love them. They're my favorites. I've always said, I don't have any tattoos right now, but I've always said that if I were to get a tattoo, it would be on my foot, and it would be Morse code for something that means a lot to me, like perhaps my son's initials or something like that, so that's what I would do. Okay, let's see, let's see. Yeah, it is pretty sweet. I, I love that man. <laughs> Henrik is awake. Oh no! Uh, okay. Let's 
go back in time. That is be cute. Thanks, Maggie. Ah, okay. Let's look for the package. Uh, I don't know if it would come this fast, but... Ooh, it came! Ichio Museum! Oh, that is freaky! one with the rabbit. Gotta go for now, but I should be back somewhat soon. Thank you for joining, Casey. Hope to see you again. Good luck with whatever you're up to. Okay, but seriously though, I've got to call Prudence. So like, why you is Franklin no Dragon voicemail. I need him to get that number for me, right? Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? I'd like to speak to Franklin Rose, please. I'm sorry, but Mr. Rose is out of the office. Would you like to try back later? Sure. Thank you for calling Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. <sighs> okay. I... I truly don't know what to do. I can try calling them again. You have no Okay, so what next? In an effort to not be here all night, what I'm gonna do is pull up the Game Boomers walkthrough. Here we go. Okay, let's see. Where did I leave off? So what I'm seeing on the walkthrough is that I should be able to call the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. And the number that I've been typing in is completely accurate, but I can't. <laughs> Let's go see if Henrik is out of his reality orientation, because I definitely do need to talk to him. Oh, hey Hugh, how's it going? 
Abby's back. What did you miss? I think I might, might, you might have to use the hotel phone. Oh, 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 okay. Mm hmm. Abby, you are a valuable person to have at the chat. <laughs> I think you should have been dressed in all red, Susie. Well, I like my dress, Morgan. Look, it's my lemon dress. It's my lemon pepper creation dress. My lemon pepper creation dress. I like it. Wait, I can't do that yet. Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, I'm hoping oh, to Abby, speak to someone right? about the theft that happened there recently. Are you the press? No, I'm a detective investigating a similar crime in Washington, D.C. This is Sheila Schultz, the director. What would you like to know? My the name is Nancy Drew. Things. I'm calling from the Beach Hill Museum in You're Washington, D.C. You I understand you had some rare Maya <laughs> artifacts stolen That's recently. I been around That's in a while. right. I'm very it's sorry. a terrible loss. And the police here have no leads. Beach game. Hill was robbed too. We Valid lost one of our prized jade you. carvings. The comment like very sorry else to hear that. Yeah, it's bad I'm wondering tonight. if the robberies so are connected. Sorry, Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the incident at Chaco Canyon? Uh, Hugh, Fire I've been great, away. just busy. Um, just kind of taking time away from clue crew matters and focusing on personal matters and family and just like wheeling down my to-do list, <laughs> which is long. Um, I just had, uh, so I work for a magazine here locally and I was supposed to do an editorial and I contacted the man who was supposed to give me the information about his business to write the editorial. And he just did not get back to me. Like first his secretary got my number down wrong and even though I corrected her, she still apparently had it wrong. So he wasn't able to call me back. So then my magazine contact contacted him and was like, hey, what gives? She needs your info. And he was like, oh, well, the number was wrong. So I was like, so then tell the people at the magazine that you're already in contact? Like, it's not hard. So um, then I email him and I'm like hey, you can call me at this number or you can email me. Either way, I just need the information. I just need to know what you want me to highlight in your editorial. So I chased this man down for days <laughs> and I still haven't heard back from him. So literally last night, I was just like, I'm just going to his business's website and I'm just making stuff up. So that's what I did. So I've just been busy, um, just getting stuff done, just spending time with the fam. Uh, was that the county fair last night? That's where Liam was calling all the chickens lunch. It was very funny. But, uh, yeah, so thanks for asking. Maggie's been having a pretty chill weekend, but it could have used more streams. <laughs> Sorry. That's totally fair and understandable. So glad you're taking some time. It's the stories have been so much fun to watch. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I always see the little hearts of, like, all of my Clue Crew buddies uh, liking all of my stuff. So that's always nice to see everybody. I heard the thief left a red handprint at the scene of the crime. Is that true? Yes, it was very gruesome. It looked like blood, but according to the police analysis, the print was made with a mercuric sulfide paste. Do you know of any symbolic meaning attached to a red hand? Don't walk. Don't go there. Talk to the hand, as <laughs> my 15-year-old would say. Yeah. Really? I haven't the slightest idea. Hopefully they're happy with what I wrote, because literally, like, if I can't get a hold of the client, like, what am I supposed to do? I just made stuff up. So, I mean, whatever. The magazine sends on Tuesday, so I was like, I have to write something. I have to. What types of artifacts did no, the all thief the get are away with? At once now? Only Listen. the center's most prized <laughs> so pieces. Sorry, the case contained five pre-Columbian artifacts that were excavated I right from this area. promise you that when I chose my Wednesday and Sunday stream schedule, 
No one else was streaming on Wednesdays and Sundays, <laughs> or at least not in the Clue Crew, because I didn't want to interfere with anybody. Um, since then, things have changed, <laughs> and now I am definitely streaming at the same time as other people, unfortunately, and I just can't help that because, like, that it's just, it works out for me. So here we are. Um, and then I also often stream on Saturdays because I do the um, Disability Tea with Susie episodes and people are busy on Wednesdays or Sunday nights. So a lot of times people need a Saturday. People need a Saturday. So do you have a list we of just, the stolen pieces? We just roll. I know those pieces like the back of my hand. There were three pottery pieces, a small stone figurine with a snake head, and an ornamental jade carving. I'm interested in the jade carving. What did it look like? It was highly unusual. There was a glyph on it that no one could translate. Until we hired Henrik Vanderhuhn, that hey. is. His opinion was that it's Mayan in origin, and that it may have been a place name glyph for this area. As you can imagine, we regarded it as something of a regional treasure. Do you know that Henrik Vanderhuhn works for Beach Hill now? Yes, I know. His departure was a great loss for us. Why didn't you mention the connection when I told you I was from Beach Hill? I guess it didn't seem important. Was Henrik still working at Chaco Canyon when the theft occurred? So if you have no, a stream on a regular schedule, it happened just a few days kind of after more we left. I remember while, because after they're they're the converged. police left, the yeah. staff and I were I so depressed, we went into the lounge schedule. and picked out on the rest of Henrik's farewell cake. Was Henrik on good terms with Chaco Canyon when he left? Well, it was awfully abrupt. As soon as he heard about that monolith, boom, he was gone. For some reason, he just had to go study it. We weren't exactly happy about it, but it's not like quitting is against the law. You know, it's funny, Maggie. I actually ended up messaging some other, um, some other streamers who, just for privacy reasons, I won't say who it was but um I set my schedule I started doing it regularly everything was great and then all of a sudden this they were uh they were streaming on the exact same schedule and I was like why so I guess I I didn't want to interfere with anybody but I also didn't want anybody interfering with me like you know we're all about this like clue crew supporting clue crew thing so I was like are you trying to compete with me? What is going on here? But also, I didn't want to compete with them. So I sent a message and I was like, hey, um, like, are we good? I chose my schedule because nobody was streaming then. I didn't want to interfere with anybody else. Um, and they were like, oh, so sorry. We just like, it's all up in the air, you know? And I was like, whatever, it's fine. I just, I... I can't personally watch multiple streams at once, so I feel bad that I've had so many people tell me that they're watching me and somebody else at the same time, and I hate that. <laughs> so, like, it just bugs me. Um, yeah. Do you recall having some appraisal work done by an art dealer by the name of Taylor Sinclair? It's like such Sinclair? a non-problem, but still. How could I forget? He went on and on about the impossibly rare artifacts he could get for us. I said, are you an art dealer or a smuggler? But he assured me that the provenance documents would all be in order. Still, I never did any further business with him. He just seemed... slippery. <laughs> sure is. Could you send me a photo of that jade carving so I can take a look at the glyph? I'm afraid I sent our only print off to the insurance company. They said they'd return it, but... Who knows when our claim will be processed? I'm sorry. Thanks a million, I Sheila. I can't imagine Feel how you handle you watching any multiple more streams at once, Maggie. I literally cannot imagine. Okay. Franklin Rose has got to get me that phone number. Boswell Jackson and Rose, how may I direct your call? <gasps> I'd like to speak to Franklin Rose, please. I'm sorry, but Mr. Rose is out of the office. Would you like to try back later? Sure. Thank you for calling Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. Blah. Okay. Anyway. Let's go see Henrik. Ah. Thanks to Abby for getting me unstuck. Let's see. 
Who knew all I had to do was use the phone somewhere else? Goodness gracious. What's this? Stone. Ooh, look at that. Wait. A curse upon you who beholds this terror. The evil deeds of the Whisperer of Silent Secrets remain undead. Within this prison of rock, no stone. What? Broken only when the four corners of the world are bound together. When the first king ascends the throne again. When the last coffin full has labored it. The end of time. Hi. Nancy, you have brought me back to my work. What have you remembered? I've been working like a fiend. Look at the board. I see the board. Thank you. Just popping in on this conversation. The overlap is hard sometimes. I'm willing to give two people my views at once if I can, but I can only engage in one chat pretty much. Yeah, that's really kind of you. Abby can't do multiple streams. I can only have two on at once. If a third one is added, it's all over. Just muted one to stop by and say hi in another. Yeah, literally so annoying in SSH and in car. Yeah, seriously, the worst. Okay, I think I'm caught up in the chat. There's Henry's This password. has something to do with the plot at the museum, Nancy. I'm sure of it. Who was this whisperer of silent secrets? The whisperer came from a distinguished line of royal scribes. I can't seem to remember her name, but I do recall that she wrote an account of Maya history that greatly angered Pakal because of the way it depicted his ascent to the throne. Ah, a defamation case. What did the scribe say? I can make the call had bad oh, fashion? Thank you, Tori. From the age of 12, so when he came to the throne, Pakal claimed to be divinely appointed the first true authentic done, king of the Maya. Oh. Then the whisperer came along and wrote that Sorry, Pakal was only here, king because his mother to pulled to some strings. Yes, it was I quite a blow to Pakal's image. And I just can't do it. So he put her in a stone prison? Pakal swore that the Whisperer's words yeah, would never to see to the light of day. He put her body, her soul, and her writings yeah. all in a tomb and locked it up tight. Still, Maggie, you're way more, uh, way more talented than I am. <laughs> Wait, Henrik. A prison of stone? Totally We're not talking about the monolith, are we? Streams, That's the idea. The timing doesn't work out as often as I'd like. Hopefully more soon. That is totally fine. I like your Sunday night ones quite a bit because usually my brain is done by Sunday night and the stream is perfect wind down. Oh, thank you. Does anyone else know about this? Good question. I'm certain that there's a dirty rat trying to get into that tomb. But this is where my memory fizzles out. If I could only figure out why I took the Pakal. Well, you guys, I am just so pleased. Do you think there is anyone I can anyone trust? Can stop by Please ever, don't breathe a word of this. The There's to too me. much at stake. So, like, I know people say to me sometimes, oh, I wish I could make your streams more. Listen, I am just so pleased that anybody ever makes it ever. Like, it's so, so kind to me that people out there actually want to watch me play games <laughs> and, like, listen to me talk for three hours. So... Like, seriously, you all, thank you so much. It is so, so wonderful. One of the pieces that was stolen from the Chaco Canyon Cultural and... Center you was a jade carving with an unusual glyph on it. Do you remember translating it? I can't remember. Henrik, I received a note from your friends in Copan. I've got the Copan Fool Key. I still need the Pakal, though. How's your memory? <laughs> the tomb. Nancy, I hid the Pakal carving in the replica of the Pakal tomb at the bottom of the temple exhibit. Huh, now how did I think of that? And another thing, you'll need to get past that computer quiz. Sonny set it up with an impossible question. No one knows what Pakal was afraid of, but Sonny was petrified of the Coatamundi. It's an ornery bandit with a narrow snout and a long ring tail, much like a raccoon or a polecat. So fun. Oh my gosh, Tori. Tori says, there are so many people streaming now, so I've just had to prioritize who matters most to me and watch and support in Europe there. Thank you so much, Tori. You're literally one of my favorite people ever. And I'm so excited to interview you on Saturday. So, so fun. Oh, it's so much fun to hang out. 
It's very true too. Number of streamers just skyrocketed with the last few months. It's crazy. I know. I feel like I'm one of the one of the people who people probably think is streaming because of April first forward. And that's actually not true. Um, so I had been planning on streaming for quite a long time, but it just so happens that that coincided with that event. And, um, so I guess I can be lumped into that just because like it was at the same time frame, but, um, yeah. And it, it certainly hasn't helped or it certainly hasn't hindered my viewership. <laughs> That's for sure. But, um, like, for example, I don't think that Tori and I would have gotten to be friends if it were not for that group chat. So, like, awesome. Thanks, Nancy Drew Games. But, yeah, I had been planning to start uh, streaming for quite some time. Just hadn't gotten around to it because I was um, very, 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 very extremely busy with a very, very, very extremely busy baby <laughs> who is still very extremely busy but things have settled down quite a bit because he's like a toddler now so all of a sudden I was like hey I can stream now so here I am and it just happened to coincide but it was really very helpful <laughs> have you ever been part of You're a so smuggling racket get interviewed. I don't know oh I'm so excited to interview you can We're you tell me what time. the password is to your disk? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. You rest up. I'll be back. Maggie's I'll muted do my the best. other stream. She's watching it instantly feel more relaxed. Oh my gosh. I think Carter and Hugh and sometimes Kalina were the only ones I was watching pre-April 1st. I have a confession. I never watch Kalina. Um, I almost never watch Hugh's streams just because they're kind of late for me. Um, I've tried a bit harder recently just because, like, we're buddies. Um, Carter, I vibe so well with Carter, so I try to make it to Carter's stuff as much as possible. Um, and he usually streams at times that are very accessible to me. Like, if he streams during the day, it's, like, always during Liam's nap which is a time when I can, like, actually sit down and watch a stream, which I really love. Um, or, like, in the evening, maybe sometimes he'll be streaming and it's, like, after I've gotten Liam down. But, like, other friends, I want to support other friends so much, but, like, other friends, it's so hard to get to people's streams because, like, like Liv, who is a person that I absolutely adore, but Liv streams at 6 p.m. my time, which is probably the busiest time of day for me um because from like like four o'clock ish onward for me I'm very busy I'm like cooking dinner for my family I'm like you know wrangling my child and <laughs> he is crazy and spending time with him like all day but uh during that time like I'm cooking and paying attention to him so I'm never on my phone or far away from my computer and then like dinner time around like 5, 5.30, getting the child fed, uh, clean up. And then I spend some good like quality time just like with him. And then if John's home, like with the whole family, we'll usually go outside, let Liam play outside. So I'm completely busy. And then I'll do like his bedtime routine, bath if he needs one. So I'm completely busy from like four o'clock to like 7.30 every single day. So anyone who streams within that window, I will just never see them. So I never get to see Liv. Usually if I show up, she's like, oh, hey, Susie, I'm just about to finish. And I feel so bad, but she knows that I love her and she knows my reasoning. So it's fine. Oh my goodness. I am missing out so much on the chat. Maggie watched Kalina's and Hughes pre-April 1st. That's awesome. Tori says, yes, I wouldn't know you without the ND 34 chaos, so we love it. That's right. That's where we became from. You're uh, yeah, your stream terms aren't exactly convenient for the East Coast crew. No, it is very inconvenient, as a matter of fact. Um, but that's totally fine. Don't change a thing. The first Hughes stream I caught was actually in the middle of the day and then moved to a later time. Yeah, unless you're a night alley like me. 
<laughs> Maggie's a night alley. Oh, that's so cute. I am not very true. So you guys can kill one. Personally, I'm glad to be da 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 da. Abby loves Carter's content, but haven't been able to watch anything except for his treasure in the Royal Tower stream. And even then, you couldn't interact because you were watching on a grower and it was Twitch. I don't have Twitch. Oh, interesting. I haven't watched anything of Kalina's either. Yeah. Might have to do that. That's the only reason I have Discord. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Sorry, I just needed to get caught up. Okay, let's go. Gosh, I hope I can finish this tonight, you guys. Had Discord before, but only used to play Ticket to Ride online with my brother and his girlfriend. To all the Clue Crew chats. This browser not grow. Oh, I wonder what grower meant. I was like, what does this mean? Okay. Um. Okay, I don't need to be there. Something weird just happened with my game. Okay, so... Let's... Let's go check out... All the stuff. So we've already played, like, all the games and gotten all the way through this. The only thing we're missing was the impossible questions answer. I feel like there was something I was supposed to say to you guys and now I forget and I'm just, it's gonna drive me insane. It's locked. Why is it locked? Oh, that's right, because I haven't put in the code yet, duh. Okay, there we go. Agree about Carter, we vibe so well. Our sense of humor is similar, and there's some other stuff that's made his friendship a bright spot in my life, so I try to always make his streams or watch VODs. Doing a bad job watching my show tonight because you're all too interesting. Oh, Tori, you have to keep watching your show. That's kind of important. You're not gonna be able to see a uh, replay for a little while. Unless you tape it. You can always catch my VODs. Even every time I try to play an NC Drew game live. Haha! <laughs> At last you found the secret resting place of King Pakal, Lord of Palenque. Once you've completed all of the activities for this level, get your souvenir light stick from the Tomb of Pakal. If you need help, ask a guide for help. Where there are no guides. So let's take the quiz. Uh, how do I spell this? Okay, that's it. Congratulations, you've successfully completed the Temple Level 3 quiz. If you have already solved the other activities, you may now use your Temple key card to open King Pakal's tomb. Sweet! Hey, look, my baby. That's why it's just Hallmark. LOL. I love Hallmark. Like, unironically love Hallmark. I love just the comfort that I get from them because they're so predictable. I love that there's always, like, a girl who's, like, a boss and she lives in the big city and then she has to go where she to her hometown where she grew up with like like three trees and you know some 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 mice and <laughs> i don't know that sounds kind of more like cinderella but like there's there's always an ex-boyfriend in flannel who she reconnects with and then she dumps her big city boyfriend who's trash all along i always love this oh shiz have i not done it all Wait, let's check our progress on the computer. Oh, look at that. That's so, so lovely. I 
I always thought I would fall on this bridge in second chance somehow. Yeah, I know. This bridge is scary. I was gonna watch some Hallmark Christmas movies in July and I just forgot. I love watching fake Hallmark trailers parodies on YouTube. I am still here, Elizabeth. Oh, I was getting kiddo one to bed. Hopefully everything went well. View my progress. Oh, I have not done the other things, apparently. <laughs> I swear, I swear I did the things last week, but whatever. John was talking so much last week, it's hard to remember what happened. I've seen the one where the ex beef the, the ex beef the ex-boyfriend was actually trash and the big city guy turned out to be the right one. No, which one was that? I have to watch it. Okay, do I have this written down? Ah, I do have it written down. Okay. Yeah. so focused. <laughs> Hi, what were those weird noises? The groaning like 10 yeah. seconds ago? Those I don't know. Oh, okay. Just normal things. Hi, internet. I'm sure the internet will say hi to you once the lag catches up. Oh, gods. Yeah. Do you remember this? You were talking through this last week. No. <laughs> I didn't tell you, but he did. Tired. Yeah, he was tired. Good. Oh, I haven't seen this. This is good. Right? I know. Isn't it nice? You kept the receipt in the box, right? I kept the receipt right here. Good. Good I know. <sighs> Tori says to Hugh, work on being Joe level boring when you stream. The more you talk to me, the easier it will be. <laughs> oh my gosh, the chat will simmer down. Oh no. Is there a boring Joe joke? Not bad. She mainly just wanted to play, but if we got through... But we got through two books and she's asleep. Now hopefully Kato 2 stays asleep through the night. Oh <laughs> well. Good luck, Elizabeth. I'm on your side. Not actually Hallmark, though. Not actually dating the big city guy to start, but must love Christmas. Actually a CBS movie. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, hey, John. Everybody says hi to you. Oh, hi. Can I be in on the joke or was it a, you had to be there? Yeah, seriously, I want to be in on this boring Joe joke as well because I absolutely adore her. And I want to be in on this. But she's another person who streams while I'm busy with Liam, so not much I can do about it. Hugh says hi to you. Hey, you. I know that he's your favorite. I never said I had a favorite. <laughs> Carry over from when I was teaching. You don't have favorites because then they fight and they get angry. Um, also, Elizabeth and Maggie and Abby say hi. Hello, Casey. Nice to see you. How was your break to do whatever it is you were doing? Hopefully, it was lovely. Did I miss it? Hold on. Yeah, that's that one. My challenge is 12 Caban. So that's... Wait! <laughs> I 
I didn't do it. I see Joe and Hugh there all the time. Basically, Hugh and I were so soothing with our conversation, she fell asleep while we were in, all in the cafe. And when she woke up, she tried to explain. Oh, she chose the word boring. Oh, I see. Oh, you were babysitting. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm probably blocking my face right now. Maggie, you've got to join the virtual cafe. We have the best time. You do have soothing voices. You and I joke we will start a podcast one day and talk about whatever to give everyone sleepy time vibes. That's amazing. You have to do that. Hubs is on night shift, so each night I've had to plan something to pass the time before the kids' bedtime. Yeah, I do that a lot. Very, very, very often. She didn't actually think we were boring, just too tired to pick the right word. That's totally fine. I understand. Um, yeah, uh, I have to do that a lot. Like, as you saw, John just came home from work, so clearly Liam has been in bed for several hours now, and, um, I feel a lot of time with stuff. <laughs> So, I totally understand that. Okay, don't I, am I... Aren't I missing a piece of the calendar? Here it is. That's wow, cool. these are heavy! <laughs> I'm not sure I can hold on to these stones for very much longer. Oh, girl. I've got to put the. I can't hold on to them. Uh oh. Oh no, Nancy! Girl Sleuth drops, breaks, heavy, priceless relic. <laughs> I'm not sure I can hold on to these stones for very much longer. Wait, what am I supposed to do with them then? I've got to put these things down. I can't hold on to them. <laughs> oh. What do I do? Falling asleep with Tori and Hugh. Oh, that's cute. You guys need to do that. I'm not sure I can hold on to these stones so for very much longer. Find the right time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sound off in the chat. How am I supposed to do this? What am I supposed to do with this? Wait, these aren't supposed to go downstairs, are they? I'm They're not sure I can hold on to these stones for very much longer. I've got to put these things down. These guys go on the monolith. I don't know what I was thinking. I do know what I was thinking. I was thinking that that, um, that puzzle didn't give me anything, and I thought, oh, maybe it's missing a piece. Maybe it's this piece. That's what I was thinking. The poem said, when the first king ascends again. Yeah, we'll do that later. Thanks, Nance. Hey, can I get in this way? Hmm. Unfortunately not. You don't think I've ever dropped the stones? Take me to the monolith. Yeah, sorry. I, um... I wasn't paying attention to the chat, you guys. I'm sorry. Okay, but seriously, though, what did I do wrong with the calendar puzzle? Because I, I would swear that I did it correctly, but, I mean, I've said that before and was completely incorrect, so... Teach me... It's locked. <laughs> Why do I always do this? I just love the music in this game. You can leave through the back, but I don't think you can get in through the back. Oh, okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so what did I do wrong here? 
Using the logo graphs below, move the calendar stone so the date, the date equals 12 Kaban. Caban. And that's twelve. Now what? Oh, so it gives it back to me now? Okay. Was I just crazy and like missed that I got it last time? Let's check. Nope, I did it, okay. You guys watching are probably like, what the heck is wrong with her? Like, ah, sorry. Why is it so in my face? Let's finish the second game. Oh my gosh. Bacall's jade mask. Bacall was buried wearing a jade death mask. I read this in the last one, didn't I? No, I didn't. <sighs> so that the gods of the underworld would recognize him as a king and accord him the same status and respect as he enjoyed on Earth. Each of the jade pieces for the mask was individually carved down to the fine facial features. The pieces were then set in onto a wooden base when Pakal's tomb was discovered hundreds of years later, the wooden base had rotted and the jade pieces lay scattered in the sarcophagus. The mask we know today, then, is a reconstruction. The original mask is on display upstairs in the main exhibition hall. That's right, we did see this. That's where we saw this. Ah, oh, there it is! Oh my gosh! Okay. Yeah, give me the stuff. Okay, I'm gonna need that later. This is such a cool museum. I get stuff mixed up with the key card too. Yeah. So close, so close. Maybe you forgot to put the card in? That's very possible. Yeah. Very possible. Okay, so I'm in dire need of Franklin Rose to call Prudence Rutherford. And he told me he would days ago, and I haven't heard back from that. So. Perhaps now? You have no voicemail. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. May I speak to Franklin Rose, please? Who may I say is calling? This is Nancy Drew. Just a minute, please. Nancy, how's your investigation coming along? I'm making good progress, hey, and Salem? the Pakal okay. carving is safe and sound. But I'm afraid I can't tell you everything oh, yet. What in the world are you talking about? You, you stinky. I'm sorry, but I can't explain everything now. I'll take good care of the carving, I promise. Did you call Prudence on the hotel phone? What can I say, Nancy? So I that's don't the thing, like it. is Prudence... I don't like it one bit. I haven't gotten her number yet. Do what yet you have to do, but let's because, get this mess cleaned up, all um, right? He's supposed to give it to me, right? So you'll call Joanna and invite her back to work? Look I'll at the clock outside right Joanna's away. office. I've done that. <laughs> Everybody's saying hi to the cat. That was Salem. Thanks, Mr. Rose. That's what I'm here for. Salem is a very cute and cuddly, wonderful, sweet kitty, but he's also a very gassy kitty. So, what? Yeah, he is an idiot. He's a kitty -it. So, 
upon picking him up just now, he farted, which was just not, not what I wanted to have happen. So no kitty cat tonight. All right, well, let's try the hotel phone, like you said, Abby. Also, do you guys like my Sunny June appreciation in my notebook? Because I do. Why did I think the magazine had her contact info? I thought the same thing. It doesn't. <laughs> Let's get her phone number from the internet. This is Nancy Drew calling from Washington, D.C. I'm trying to reach Prudence Rutherford, please. Oh, yes. Franklin told me you'd be calling. Such dreadful <laughs> so news just, about Beach Hill. Yes, I will do him. everything in my power to help you catch you those rapscallions. Thank you so much. To think how they violated the sanctity of my domicile. Good <gasps> heavens. I thought he was talking about the city and it was just like, what kind of question is that? Then realized he meant the cat. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear about your loss. What can you tell me about the necklace? I can't even think about it. Oh, just the very thought of my precious necklace gone, stranded, orphaned, and in the hands of some dirty stranger makes my blood boil. Was the necklace a gift? I inherited it from my mother-in-law. But you see, the necklace means much more to me than just a oh, handful of oh, priceless I'm rubies. Tired, guys, this game better be over soon. Ugh. Anyone else think Prudence is giving Mr. His downfire at times? 100%. 1,000%, in fact. More? In what way? I had the necklace restrung to include an exquisite jade carving as the centerpiece. A genuine artifact of the ancient Maya. The carving is not only one of a kind, but a Rutherford family heirloom given to me by my great-grandfather when I was just a little girl. What does the jade piece look like? It features a rare glyph. No one's been able to give me a precise translation, but most epigraphers have agreed that it has something to do with a snake, the color green, and the direction south. It's terribly fascinating. I need that. <laughs> do you think the thief or thieves had any idea of what they were stealing? Oh, they must have known. The rest of my valuables were left untouched. Frankly, I don't know whether to be grateful or insulted. What about evidence? The first thing I saw when I opened my eyes was this positively ghoulish red handprint on the wall. I nearly jumped out of my skin. A red handprint was left at the scene of the crime at Beach Hill, this, too. Uh, Ms. Rutherford, I'm almost certain that these robberies were committed by the same person. Robin Williams. But why? What is so special very, very about sad. these carvings? Miss Rutherford, it would be so helpful if I knew exactly what your carving looked like. Could you send me a picture that shows it in detail? I can do better than a photo. The insurance company made this dreadful replica of the necklace with the idea that I would wear such a thing <laughs> to public functions. Please! 
But I could send that to you, if you'd like. Oh, that would be wonderful. How soon could you have it here? You have it tomorrow or the next day. Yes. My secretary will have the address of the museum. Now, if that is all you will require, young lady, I will need to attend to other pressing matters. Thanks a million, Miss Rutherford. I won't let you I down. I watched Flubber so Call many times Prudence. as a child. Oh, and Nancy, when you find the villains who did this to me, do me a favor and give them a sound thrashing. <laughs> You're coming through loud and clear. Bye. I actually just watched it not too long ago, like a four or five years ago, I want to say. Which seems like a long time ago now that I'm thinking about it. Wait. All right. A curse upon you who beholds this terror. The evil deeds of the Whisperer of Silent Secrets remain undead. Within this prison of stone broken only when the four corners of the world are bound together. When the first king ascends the throne again, when the last cup and fool has labored till the end of time. Notes. Okay. Matchmaker. Prison of stone. The prison bears an intricate lock. Six separate keys must be assembled to fit the lock. Look at the riddle. Four corners of the world plus fool and king equals six. Each must represent one interlocking part of a bigger key. A cube has six sides. Perhaps they fit together into a cube. But where are these keys and what do they look like? Probably the call scattered them all over the Maya world so that they would never, uh, not ever be put back together. Keys carved out of must be jade, likely two that each bears an identifying glyph. Must track them down before it's too late. Someone else knows about this. Scribe the Mox Kali from Shaman's Legend. Sha whatever. Uh, okay, yeah, I gave those to Henrik. The monolith must be a mechanism for her punishment. And because she was most likely of royal lineage, Bacall could not permanently prohibit her from entering the underworld. So there should be a mechanism within the Prison of Stone to allow her soul to find its way out as well. As a mechanism for someone else to open the prison from outside the monolith, the Six Keys. Artifacts found as far north as New Mexico. Numerous pieces lost in recent Chaco's Canyon Cultural Center heist. The North Key likely among them, but contact other museums in the area just to be sure. El Muso Cultural... Okay. Maya civilization extended to western Honduras, northern El Salvador, Belize, further Amazon jungle. See Rutherford interview in recent issue of Art Appraiser. Cantonilcan is at western tip of Mexico, but what about Cuba? The Maya were great astronomers, therefore capable of sea travel. Seems likely they would have been aware of the island. Research records show one Bishop Diego de Landa found a strange jade carving there in 1652. Could this be the East Key? Villa Gede. Ghetto Island, too far. Research, 1898. Jade carving with unidentifiable glyph. Sold at New York auction. According to Provenance Docks, artifact originally found by Spanish military <laughs> commander Juan de Ascension Cortego, 1753, Cocos Island off Costa Rica. Sold to whom? Carving sold to Midwestern shoe polish tycoon Henry Albert Daddle. Oh, we're gonna call Henry Daddle. Cop and Fool. Reports from Digger Good found Jade carving with Rabbit Glyph. Rabbit was trickster in Maya folklore. Could this be the Fool? Radio for delivery. Call. Touted self as first true king, the Beach Hill carving must be next on, next on the thief's list. Must stop. How? need to place the call in a safe place. I cannot trust anyone at this time. Moral dilemma, but can I argue that the end justifies the mean? Means that I need to send a loud and clear message to the culprit racing to open the monolith alongside me. I only hope that I can win this round. The city's name means submerged crocodile. Crocodile like was depicted in many glyphs. Palkaka. Priest. Okay. Naming. Ah, for boys, X for girls. After prefix the name of a mammal, reptile, or bird. E.g. boy, abalam, 
natural ink squat. After puberty, the child would take on his or her father's last name as well. Super interesting. All right, Mexico. Password snake and Wahadal Salvador. Okay. All right. So I have not been paying attention to you guys. Did anyone watch Mork and Mindy? Yes. I have seen that. It was something we watched when Netflix was a DVD mailing service only. Oh my gosh, do you remember that? Can't remember, what is the Snoopy Susie Redeem? It is exclamation point redeem space Snoopy Susie. Enjoy. It always scares me. I don't know why. Alright. Oh wait, we gotta call Henry Dowell. But I already forget his number, so let's pull up the, uh, the walkthrough again. Here we go. One, six, zero, five, nine, five, five, three, one, nine, five, 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 Mr. Daddle, my name is Nancy Drew. This is a long shot, but I'm calling regarding a Maya artifact that was bought at auction in 1898 by one Henry Albert Daddle. Does that ring any bells? Sure. Henry Albert Daddle Sr. was my great-grandfather. You're talking about the jade oh. carving, right? Yes, exactly. Wow, I can't believe my luck. Well, it's a lucky life if you ask me. So what can I do for you? I'm investigating a recent rash of we'll thefts around the country involving similar Maya artifacts. Any information you could give me about the one your great-grandfather bought would be very helpful. I see. Well, I was the last to inherit the carving, but my daughter Penelope was so intrigued with it that I gave it to her. I'm sure she'd be happy to talk to you about it. Why don't you give her a call on her line? It's 55531 Nine seven. You're a real Snoopy Susie, aren't you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Gets me every time. Will do. Thanks, Mr. Daddle. My pleasure. Hello? Hi, is this Penelope? Is this the voice of Dirk Bell in letters? Oh, is this sure. 605-555-3197? Yeah, but no one calls me Penelope anymore. Isn't this Ned? To yeah, my it is parents, that is. To my friends, the art world, and anyone else who made it out of the 20th century, I'm Poppy. The art world? Wait, you're not Poppy oh, Dada, well, are you? Ta-da! Ping, ping! You win! Who's this? Dear friend, his My name's is Nancy as Drew. I'm is a detective. So? A detective? I forget. It's no been a while. way. So do you get to wear a sassy tweed hat and pick hairs off dead bodies and gross, creepy stuff like that? Ew. <laughs> I don't run into too many dead bodies, luckily, but there's plenty of other creepy stuff. So, where'd you get my name? Don't tell me I'm, like, wanted by the FBI or something. That would be too scandalous. <laughs> Not quite. Taylor Sinclair told me about you. I saw one of your paintings in his office here in Washington, D.C. So, how do you know Big Bunny Sinclair? Ah, so Big Bunny is Taylor Sinclair. So... You're a real Snoopy oh, Susie, gosh. aren't you? You guys have got to stop that. Okay, so Henrik and Taylor... 
were on that hike in Honduras, was it? Or no, it was somewhere else in the 70s together. So Taylor is the person he was so unimpressed by. Taylor's a suspect in the case I'm working on. That's hot. What's a case? Are there dead bodies involved? Do you oh need gosh. to, like, tap oh, you don't my phone dead bodies, or impersonate don't me or something? Soon. <laughs> Someone is stealing Maya antiquities, jade carvings to be exact, and leaving this scary red handprint at the scene of every crime. Ghastly. So, what's with the red hand? It's printed with this stuff called cinnabar. Nobody seems to know what it means. All I know is the more I investigate, the more complicated it gets. Drama. So where do the daddles come in? I'm trying to track down certain Maya Jade carvings that haven't fallen into the thief's hands yet. I think one of them might be in your family. You mean that ancient green rock with the weird symbol on it? I slapped some shoe polish on it and stuck it in one of my paintings. You're kidding. That's a one-of-a-kind Maya artifact, a piece of history. It's hundreds of years old. You it's worth a lot of money. Down again. That's the whole so you point. Your crew crew Have you heard the saying that a work of art is never finished, I just agree. abandoned? Well, I'm taking that idea to the limit by making art that will keep changing as different people encounter, perceive, and interact with it. I'm tired of artwork that says, don't touch. I'm all about letting go, about sending my work into the world and seeing how it continues to become. Don't you see? It's an organic process. I mean, how can people really relate to art if it doesn't come to life and, and, and grow and die it's just like they do? That carving is part of something bigger now. That reminds me, I still need to order Clue Crew sweatshirt or hoodie. Same, actually. I've been waiting for the weather to cool down so that I can buy my uh, sweatshirt then and then not be sad when I can't wear it. So ready for sweater weather, fall is my favorite. Can't decide which one I want. Love both. <laughs> Poor Candle Lust Us. Um, yeah, same, Tori. Fall is my favorite. My, my, my favorite seasons go like this. Fall, winter, spring, summer. I am not a summer Susie. In fact, I hate summer. I hate being hot. I would much rather be cold and then made warm. You know what I mean? I like to be cozy in blankets and fuzzy socks. I can't imagine your dad would be very pleased about this. Does he know? Oh, Nancy, don't be such a prude. Taylor's probably still got that artwork. At least, I don't think he sold it yet. Why don't you ask him? Tell him you want to see the piece called Deadly Midnight Snack. It's the one with the rubber shark. The one with the rubber shark. We're the yes, same I've seen summer. it, but I it's didn't notice any jade People carving. People who like summer, I'm well, convinced, have just been like look there, sweet. brainwashed in because there. they hate school. If you really need the carving to crack this case, why don't you just go ahead and take it? But wouldn't it ruin your painting? Of course not. Yes, you can warm up if you're cold. After all, this is a chance to enact to cool down exactly when you're what I've been talking ridiculous. about. I know. The organic process. Inviting my yeah, viewers Casey, to interact to with product. my work. The deal is, I just you can take the carving, but you summer. have to put something in its place. You love summer for the sunshine in the garden. But when it gets close to 100, oh my goodness, no, I know. kind of love summer and I think it's only because of usually having free time during the summers y'all get it I hate summer too when it gets close to 100 I'm done I know you guys it's just not the greatest there's this girl that I know who is obsessed with summer and I'm pretty sure it's because she hates school and um she made this Facebook post that I just found absolutely ridiculous where she was talking about how she had gone to the beach and it was so hot that she was throwing up. And I was like, well, so for one thing, that's a problem. But she finishes this by saying, but I like summer is my absolute favorite season. I would rather this than being cold in the wintertime. And I'm like, you'd rather be getting sun poisoning 
than having like a, a fuzzy blanket wrapped around you. <laughs> like it does not make sense. Live in Michigan and your summers are so mild that I don't really feel like summer actually happens here. Oh, see, that's really lucky. It's disgusting here. When it gets close to 100. Oh, yeah. Did you see Carter's story a couple days ago about the highs above 100 the next several days in his area? I wanted to die when I saw that. Yeah, that was awful. It doesn't get to around 100 very often here. It's usually, like, like close, but not above, like, 99. So, pretty temperate. <laughs> I can choose anything? A light bulb? A magnifying glass? A <laughs> pair of headphones? No, it should be something more organic. Stay with the title, Deadly Midnight Snack. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to go way out. As an artist, I can tell you that inspiration bites in the most mysterious ways. We're trying to do my scratch, best. Scratch. Put sunscreen right on. on your ears. But let's keep Taylor oh, out of this. I feel so he bad probably for you. <laughs> blow a gasket if he saw you tampering with the merchandise. That's all art is to him, you know. Merchandise. I'll make sure he doesn't detect a thing. <laughs> Good luck, Nancy. Thanks, Bobby. Bye. Grew up in Iowa where it'd get really warm and humid, but we would go to the local water park slash pool every day. I think I like summer for the nostalgia. Yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> Gonna head out. Oh, is Canada burning you? I am so sorry. But thank you. Have a good evening. Currently working 26 degrees. What, seriously? I like fall too, but it's gotten so popular that I almost want to be contrary about it now, so my fall doesn't start until the equinox. Not as bad this time. Earlier in the summer... I'm pretty sure my ears peeled twice because they were so burned. Oh, Elizabeth, you poor thing. Living in Missouri is seriously so humid and sticky every summer, but I can't stand being cold, so I deal with it. So, Maggie, about that uh, fall being popular thing. It's popular for a very good reason. Because it is lovely. And uh, truly, though, it does kind of bother me when people think that fall starts in August, and I'm like, you guys looked at the weather lately? Like, it is, it's not fall until September 21st, I think. So like, what do you, where are you even getting that? My fall starts in September. I don't know about you guys. He won't be there this late. Oh, fine. That's right. Yeah. Honestly, winter is probably my least favorite because it gets too cold and sometimes hard to travel. I like winter more working from home. There's no way I couldn't love fall. Upstate New York falls are too good. Oh, I'm sure they're gorgeous. Yeah, fall is great here. Winter is really easy here. Um... Yeah, now that I've said that, it's probably going to be the hardest winter we've ever had. But I wouldn't be mad because we haven't had snow in several years. Like, we've had, like, snow flakes, but we haven't had, like, a decent snowfall in a while. Not in Liam's lifetime, at least. So not for the last two years. My second kiddo's birthday will be when I start considering fall things. She's a September baby early, but still September. Yeah, uh, September 1st is when I start decorating my house with, like, pumpkins and stuff. Any news? There was an incident at the museum. Henrik is in the hospital with the a head injury. Mild too, but endlessly cloudy. Poor Henrik. The trees drop Another their leaves squabble by, like, between him and Joanna, and perhaps? Until May. Oh, oh I'm rough. kidding. But I do remember the time she threatened to push him in the pond. Temper, temper, I'm always telling her. Mind if I help myself to one of those scrumptious-looking Oaxacan cookies? Be my guest.
May I take a closer look at that wacky Dada painting? Be my guest. I just had a call from Poppy this morning. She says she's in a really creative okay. period right now. I said, please, sweetie, if you get any more creative, they're going to lock you up. <laughs> uh, pardon me a moment, Nancy. I'll be right back. I hope. Is he okay? Poppy said to replace it with something organic. <laughs> Amazing. All righty. Hoping for a good first... No, hoping for a good snow. We haven't had a white Christmas since Kiddo's first birthday. Oh, Kiddo One's first birthday. Should DM you a false shot? Yes, Tori, send me all the photos. I feel like we get to experience all four seasons pretty well here. We get a good temperature and weather variation. Yeah, I, I would agree that in my state, we also experience all four seasons. The crazy thing is that we experience them all in one week sometimes. I know we've talked about it before, but earlier this year, there was a day that was 82 degrees, and then the next day it snowed. So, fun times in the middle of the coast. Spring is probably my favorite season, and I'm sure some of that is left over from school year schedule too. See, I'm telling you, it's all because of school. Let's see if I got a package from Prudence. Those walking cookies will get you. <laughs> the current comment was for Taylor. Oh yeah, you're fine. I never want a white Christmas anymore because I have to travel to visit my parents or in-laws. Oh, that is rough. I went to Ohio U and Athens was always gorgeous in the fall. Brick roads, red and orange leaves on the trees, all the brick buildings. I consider that town under the definition of fall. Oh, you sent me some pics? Oh, awesome. I have do not disturb on, so I won't get to see those until later, but thank you so much. Nazi, please relieve me of these hard, thick rubies by offering them to the Maya god of refuse, if there is one. I have no love for imposters. <laughs> Gimme. <laughs> okay, so... Do I have all the pieces? What do I have left to get? Can I put them together here? Yeah, okay. I'm missing two pieces. Where do I get said pieces? We could not have picked a better October day to visit that park. Oh, that sounds amazing. Hold on, let's check it out. Let's take a look-see. Oh my word, Tori. These are stunning. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is absolutely beautiful. Wow incredible okay uh, did that did that wait a second okay I need to call the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center because I still need their piece. So let's see if they've got their thing back from insurance yet. Um, here we go. Put them on Discord too. Oh yes, awesome, thank you. All right, let's call Sheila. I don't remember her number, so let's pull up the walkthrough again. Here we go. One, five, zero, five, 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 one, two, two, two. You've reached the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. The center is now closed. Oh. Regular hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. seven days a week, except on major national holidays, when we are closed. <laughs> I like her voice. Take a 45 minute nap, Nance. Also, have you 
you guys notice that time zones don't exist in the Nancy Drew world? Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, this is Nancy Drew calling. Hi, Nancy. It's Sheila. What can I do for you? I've just got to get my hands on a replica of that jade carving you lost. Do you have any ideas? Not off the top of my head, but maybe one of my staff will have a bright idea. I need some time to ask around. Can you call back later? Sure thing. Feel free to call if you have any more questions. I haven't talked to Bess in a while. Sometimes the Tim Zins exist, but rarely. Yeah, they certainly Hello? don't exist in Hey, Bess, game. it's me, Nancy. What's new? It's pouring rain. George and I are in the middle of a heated game of Go Fish, and I'm winning. Don't believe a word she says, Nancy. Last hand, I made mincemeat out of her. <laughs> anyway, we don't want to make you homesick. How's the internship going? Everything was going great until someone broke into a display case and stole one of the museum's most valuable artifacts. A jade carving of King Pakal. Who was King Pakal? He's considered one of the great Maya rulers. He reigned at the height so of the Maya a civilization. Version of making sure so to happened? do all the tourism. Well, ice apparently the, the civilization was yeah. never quite the same after he died. No, silly with the theft. What happened with the theft? Who are your suspects? Do you have any clues? Easy, ladies. Let's just say that so far I have more questions than I do answers. But don't worry, I'm on the case. There goes your low-key internship. Honestly, Nancy, it never will cease to amaze me how one girl can cross paths with so much trouble. Detective Drew, requesting hint, please. Call Sheila Schultz back and see if she's come up with any bright ideas about the North Key. Sure. I'll talk to you later, ladies. Bye. See ya. Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, this is Nancy Drew calling. Hi, Nancy. It's Sheila. Well, we racked our brains. Finally, one of my staff came up with the original box that the carving was packed in. The piece was encased in a tight foam cast to prevent damage during shipping. I'm not sure how much good it'll do you, but I can send it to you if you like. That just might work. Henrik left Beach Hill as his forwarding address, so I know what to do. I'll send it express. Thanks a million, Sheila. Good luck with your investigation. Ah, yes. Okay, let's go get it. Uh, is there anything else that I need to do here? It's probably not here, but let's just have a look-see. Oh my god, is that it? <sighs> okay. Oh my god, that's it. Can you imagine? I bet I can make a mold from this foam core. I bet you can too, Nancy. But how? That's the question. Let's go to the lab and see what we can turn up. Still missing one. Okay, where's the last one? I'm ready to be done. Okay. 
Apparently Joanna should be back now, and I haven't even looked to see close that door. for clearing my name, Nancy. Honestly, I mean, what kind of moron would I be to try and ruin my own exhibit? I know, right? Anyway, we need to make up for lost time. I need you to go to the storeroom and start unpacking some of those crates. One of the pieces has a fancy security device on it. The code is 0677. Sure thing, Joanna. I'll see you later. Semper ubi sabubi. Sorry guys, I wasn't paying attention to you. I'm not missing Prudence's, I'm missing the one from Joanna. So now I'm getting the one from Joanna. You guys, we're almost done. Now we've, we're finally almost done. So we get to see that really crazy wacky ending. Nope, not that one. Is it this one? Let's go make the key. Solve the mystery. According to Henrik's notes, I need to make a key out of these pieces. Yeah, we sure do. None of these? Nothing's turning red and I can't place anything. I think you may need to place the top first, but I've tried. But how do I rotate the key? Oh, here we go. Ah, I see. Thank you. Now I have the key. Oh, brilliant. There were no problems, I was just stupid. Who wants to bet that I'm gonna get super duper stressed during this? Hmm. Side looks damaged. Here. 
What does six will not look like? Oh my gosh, you guys, six will not looks like this. Well, that's not helpful. Secret of the Scarlet Hands. Just. I don't know if UHS has this. Uh, how would you even... Time to go to the message boards. I'm so sorry, you guys. I didn't want to have to go through the whole place again, so. Got it. I've already solved this part. already solved this part. Why can't I spin around it anymore? There we go. Ah. I'll have to choose which side of the cube goes here. You should have brought my notebook downstairs in the solution. It is so fine, you guys. Don't worry about it. I figured it out with the help of the internet. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. I should probably save the game, by the way. <laughs> Nothing happened. Oh, that was it. <laughs> okay. I did that side. Now let's do this side.
should be the last step. But I forget which one I haven't used, so... <laughs> I think I've used that one. Yeah, I have. I wonder what's inside. <gasps> My gosh. I'm not ignoring you guys, I swear. What's up, Morgan? Redeem Snoopy Susie. No spaces. It's blank. Who's your friend, Nancy? Ah! Boo. Taylor Sinclair. You're a real Who'd Snoopy Susie, <laughs> aren't you? Fairy. Looks like someone forgot her beauty cream. I guess we can't all age gracefully. <sighs> I'm sure she would say the same about you. I'm making an excuse. You've been a top-notch <laughs> assistant, really awesome, Nancy, Morgan. but I just got the I'm afraid you're me. just not going to make it in the art Whew. world. <laughs> Thanks, Abby. Why are you doing this? Nancy, do you have any idea what that book contains? All of a sudden. Help me out, Sinclair. I'm drawing a blank. The Whisperer's writings are the only known personal account of Maya life. The only written glimpse into Bacall's time anywhere. Do you know what I can get for that thing on the black market? <laughs> you guys are the worst and also the best. You have no right to do this. The book is not yours to sell. Simple Morgan, economics I want to hear all about the activity otherwise. book. That sounds amazing. And I am the art dealer. This tomb and all of its contents belong to Mexico. Finders keepers, I say. Nobody even realizes this thing has any contents. Won't they get a surprise when they finally open it up and find that it contains a 7th century scribe and a 21st century detective? Adios, Nancy. Has mazes and coloring pages and spot the differences? That's super cool. Something's missing here. I'm starting to run out of air in here. Yeah, I'm sorry, Nancy. Just give me a moment. I gotta find the dead body first. Um, serious? Problems. That's what's going on. Something's missing <laughs> here. I gotta get out of here. You don't get a timer or anything? You're just kind of. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm going to bed. Okay. Oh, there's. I'm the... suffocating in oh, here. Let me out. Too. Something's oh, I found it. missing here. Nope, dead body. Something's missing here. That thing. That's the person. I don't know what I'm looking for. Oh, here we go. This may be the scribe's notes about Bacall. from the tomb <laughs> like a mermaid from the sea <laughs> meanwhile the foolish villain stews in the sour soup of his own miscalculation <laughs> from deep in the recesses of time a wise royal scribe whispers her thanks what on earth <laughs> and a priceless chapter of history is rescued from obscurity where to go nancy <laughs> What in the world? Ah! Confound you, Nancy Drew! 
Dear Dad, it was great to talk to you on the phone last night. I can't wait to see you back in River Heights where I can fill you in on the whole story. Can you believe that your own daughter was recently standing face to face with a real mummy? Alejandro now that the scribe's so book has been recovered, I understand how important it is so and why Taylor thought, thought he could make this. a fortune no selling it on the black market. Later, the book contains oh one of the only personal really accounts of Maya life and existence anywhere. Mouth. I'm sure it'll be a tremendous no, addition to our knowledge of the Maya once it's translated, that is. And now that Henrik's memory is back up to speed again, I'm sure he'll be itching to get to work on it. Taylor Sinclair won't be making any art deals for a long a time now, that's Thank for sure. So much, I guess I shouldn't be surprised about Alejandro's Such discovery that the Bacal Carving's sure provenance is. documents were faked after all. When Franklin Rose and the board found out, they arranged to return the artifact to Mexico right away. Mexican officials are so happy to have the artifact back, they have pledged a new era of diplomatic relations with Beach Hill. Joanna sure learned her lesson about making deals with shady operators like Taylor. The board has agreed to give her another chance as long as she reforms her business tactics. And what else? Oh, yes, Poppy Dada's announced a new direction in her artwork. All her new paintings are going to feature, what else? Mysterious red handprints. Oh, so I, I guess it. everyone is taking off in new directions now. <laughs> I'm going to stay and help this exhibit get launched. But I'll see you back at home in a couple of weeks. Have a safe trip home. Love, Nancy. Woo! Ooh. Dear Nancy, Bess and George told me you're on a case in D.C. I hope everything is working out for you. I wish I could say the same for me. I'm planning on living here, but there's been some trouble. I think someone or something doesn't want me here. Please, Nancy, I'm afraid I can't stay here very much longer. I know you're busy, but I'm desperate. I need you to come out and investigate. Please say you will. Your friend, Sally. All right, so that's that. We're done. No, we don't need to save the game. We're done with the game. I'm going to uninstall it. Shoot, what is going on here? Okay, goodbye. All right, hi. How's everybody doing? Uh, thanks, you guys, for joining me. Make me a little bigger. I probably look messy. It's been a long day. I wonder what happened to Sally. So mysterious. Yes, Morgan, are you seeing it? Morgan's fave. Oh, yes. Oh, you're putting word searches into that's super cool. Hi, Charity. Nice to see you. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Okay, so you're probably wondering what I'm doing next. Well, let me tell you. So, oh, wow, my, my glitter actually looks kind of nice in it. So next week is a very interesting week for Susie Should Be Streaming. Um, so basically, it is a double spilling the tea with Susie week. I'm going to be working overtime this week. So um, what's going to happen is on Wednesday, I will be interviewing Shannon, whom we all know and love, and I'm so excited. And then on Saturday, I'm going to be interviewing Tori, whom we all know and love. So is that correct? Tori, you're here. Um, correct me if I have you guys backwards. So anyway, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. So uh, look out for, sorry, I just needed a stretch. Look out for the question box for Shannon going up Tuesday morning and uh, give her all your questions. It's going to be great. And then look out for the next question box Friday morning and give Tori all your questions. And join me, of course, Wednesday and Saturday, uh, 7.45 p.m. Eastern time for both of them. And it's going to be a super-duper fun week. So, so fun. I'm so excited. Like, I literally can't wait. Two of my absolute favorite people. It's going to be so fun. Oh, good. I'm right. Okay. Thank you, Tori. So anyway, yeah. So that's that's all I've got for you tonight. So um, I'll see you next time. And just a little reminder, I decided I couldn't handle three times a week. I tried. I failed. So... What's going to happen now is, yes, I just finished Secret of the Scarlet Hand, and I should be going to Ghost Dogs at Moon Lake next, right? 
wrong. <laughs> Actually, I'm doing something different because I want to, I don't want to niche myself so much that I'm only playing Nancy Drew. So I've been playing through my Steam library in alphabetical order, or I just started this or rather, I've only just finished the very first game, which was the ABC Murders. So, um, because I have so many games and I want to play them. So I was like, let's just go through the list. Let's just do it. So, um, next week, wrong again. No, I actually, I'm actually doing something different. So I'm taking a short break. I, you guys, I am so sorry. So here's what's happening. So on Wednesday, I'm interviewing Shannon. On Saturday, I'm interviewing Tori. And then the following week is this. Hold on. I have a content planner for a reason. Do, do, do. Here it is. Yes, that's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. So then the following week, on Wednesday, I'm going to be playing a game that night. Because my... You've been waiting forever for this week to come. You're so excited. Me too. I'm so excited. Okay. So first Shannon, then Tori, then... The following Wednesday, not this coming Wednesday, the next Wednesday, I'm going to be playing a game, but I'm, go I'm not going to be playing a Steam game. I'm actually taking a break from that, and I'm going to be playing a game called Murder at Chateau de Rouge. And this game is really special because it was made entirely by my sister. And I know you all know my sister now. She's amazing. So... I will be interviewing her for Spilling the Tea with Susie on September the 2nd. So I want to play her game before I interview her. So I decided to do that real quick on um, the 30th. So that's what I have coming up. Um, you guys will see this reflected in my stream schedule, which I will be posting on my Instagram. And yeah, so make sure you're following my Instagram. Make sure you're following my YouTube channel so you see all my content. Thank you so much. Uh, three times a week is heaps. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, yeah, Abigail. Yeah, I'm so excited. All right, you guys. Now that we finally got that hammered out, <laughs> let's let's. Let's go to bed. <laughs> it's, I've been on for three hours. So thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.